Destiny, it is a gift to have you in our reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the he covered himself in sackcloth and set in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. Animal changed his mind about the and he did not do it. The word of the Lord.
grace and remind them all they need is within their grasp. <clears throat> a friend of mine is a chaplain at a retirement facility in Oklahoma City and really brought home for me this image of God being within a grasp. For she shared that a resident upon her return from the hospital said, I had nothing except Jesus. In the fearful moments of the ambulance and the emergency room, this elderly woman held on to the presence and the promise of Jesus to be with her. The same colleague notices the ways in which wheelchair-bound residents will reach out to one another and grasp their hands during worship. This physical touch is another unnoticed by most connection that these individuals have in the isolation of limited mobility. God's redeeming grace and perpetual presence provides comfort. In moments of isolation or when calamity strikes, clinging to Jesus and reaching out to one another can bind us to God. We can recall how Jesus was not alone in the wilderness during his 40 days of temptation. The wild animals and the angels of God were with him. God is always present, especially in our times of struggle, hardship, and adversity. We get glimpses of the kingdom of God coming near, as someone brings a pot of stew to another who has been ill, as state troopers knock on the windows of stranded drivers to ensure their safety, and in a week when the Spectrum Internet was on perhaps as much as it was on, and disrupted our work, we extended extra compassion because it just took longer to get things done. We also extend compassion as I had a phone conversation with a friend who had her power out five of the seven days in Northwest Portland late this last week. It got down to 34 degrees in her house at one point. To complicate the situation, she had a generator in her home because her husband, who died nine months ago, was the chair of the disaster response team and never left the manual of how to do that. His sudden death left her seemingly helpless. And yet, it was the grace of God the warmth of a gas fireplace and a battery operated flashlight or lamp that brought her that comfort. We each have these stories of how there is struggle and strife, and yet we are called into being more compassionate. Because practicing compassion when we are pressed to the limit is modeling the grace God bestows upon us. 
and I needed to call on that compassion when my irritation rose with drivers in the wintry weather last weekend. It was not my finer moment. Shifting my outlook helped compassion grow as I acknowledged the other driver was doing the best they could, driving in slush, sleet, and snow. I imagined them driving to dialysis or to a job they would lose if they did not show up despite inclement weather. I blessed them when it was safe to pass. However, there were moments in which I felt like Jonah. Leslie Allen puts it this way, a Jonah lurks in every Christian heart, whimpering his insidious message of smug prejudice, empty traditionalism, and exclusive solidarity. He that has ears to hear, let him hear, and allow the saving love of God, which has been outpoured in his own heart, to remold his thinking and social orientation. I had been irritated that they were interfering with my timeline and schedule for getting errands accomplished. Compassion helped me remember God's presence as I struggled with my own expectations. Grover feared the monster at the end of the book and was angry at the page turn. I was frustrated that other drivers did not have the confidence, didn't, didn't have my confidence in driving in wintry weather. Health concerns can dampen our energy and the ability to accomplish what we want. And yet, as human beings, we want what we want when we want it. And when we don't get it, we may sulk, like Jonah. However, when we cling to certitude that our way is the only way, we prevent ourselves and others from receiving what God has placed in front of us, that is, abiding presence and sufficient grace. The senior woman who declared, I had nothing except Jesus, received the gift of God's grace and love. She knew that in the frightening moments of her health crisis, she had the love of Jesus uplifting her. I believe the first disciples equally sensed an assurance and profound presence in Jesus to join him on the journey. Together, they invited people to turn their lives around and be focused on God's presence and peace. Whether this is the first time you have heard this story or you know it by heart, may we be encouraged to trust in the steadfast love of God to be our safety, our rock, and our refuge. Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. But for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look at the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers <coughs> of the people of Form 1. Give all our heart and give all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, heavens. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For our bishop, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray, pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those we live in, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widows and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, and the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us, and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy.
mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal faith. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace reverently one with another. Thank you. 
hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, in this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, we are created and be. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called mm -hmm. us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. <laughs>
wine. In this, Christ comes to us with love from God, the gift of God for the people of God.
blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. turn in articles for that, uh, those are due today. So please get them in. Give uh, Tara time to get the uh, everything pulled together for our annual meeting. Uh, Celebration of Life for Ann Riddle will be uh, Thursday, January 31st. Wednesday. Or Wednesday, January 31st. Thank you. And, uh, and for the updated directory, uh, this will be an invaluable tool for our new rector. And uh, hopefully, he can recognize you from the pictures that are in there. <laughs> if not, or if you don't get it yet, yes. That's a hint, isn't it? An updated photo? It is. Thank you. You're welcome. So, yes, uh, please get your new pictures over to Kara, and uh, that way we can get the, uh, uh, have those in the office uh, by February 26th, and then Kara will have a chance to get them pulled together just in time. Uh, let's see, there will be a vestry meeting on the 23rd, and uh, that will settle uh, a budget and uh, several other issues that uh, are before the vestry. And if you're interested in attending that, you can attend by Zoom or to come in person if you like. And uh, we welcome parishioners to participate in that. Uh, we are still in need of people to offer rides uh, to some of the some of our parishioners who can no longer drive would like very much to be here. So uh, please contact uh, Marie Wilson Gerard, waving her hand out there, if uh, you are able to help with that. Thank you. And uh, the Ashland Community Food Bank is still looking for food. And uh, people are still hungry, even though it's not Thanksgiving anymore. So uh, let's continue to support that important uh, community work. Uh, the Vestry Nominating Committee. Uh, hopefully you've read the list of candidates there. We're looking forward to having a new Vestry in place on the 4th. And uh, thank you. And uh, Lenten Evening Prayer will begin. Uh, it will be uh, five weeks during Lent. Uh, and uh, the first uh, Lenten service will be February 20th. Thank you very much. Yes, it's POP time. If you read the uh, Friday bulletin, you know, and if you saw as you came in, your POP envelope is in the back. I want to thank the uh, volunteers who stuffed on Friday. Uh, and I want to remind you that um, it's first come, first serve for parties being assigned. So those of you who came to church today have a spiritual and a physical reward uh, in that you have received your POP envelope. But if you don't have to talk to anybody else, you can just uh, fill it out and put it in the church Slot, yes. Brief explanation of what POP is. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it, it's uh, right. So, Party of Parties is, of course, our major fundraiser for the outreach uh, that Trinity does every year. And it is a party on the 13th of February. And it is then an also an opportunity to find out because many of our generous parishioners have donated parties and events and gatherings that will happen for fellowship throughout the whole year. And so, you will find out at that on the 13th. Uh, which parties you were quick enough to jump on because they all also all have a limit, of course, of who they can tell. 
uh, who they can take. So that was the first thing I wanted to say. Thank you for that. Um, and there will be a detailed uh, explanation and list of all the people I want to thank, we all want to thank, that have helped us in the next Trinitarian. But right now I want to say thanks to the people who responded to the altar call for a potato head group. We have a potato team uh, headed by Ann McGill and other volunteers from a couple of Sundays ago. So that was great. They'll be preparing the baked potatoes. Uh, and if you're saying to yourself, gosh, I wish I knew how I could help, uh, in addition to going home and putting it on your calendar and coming. Uh, at noon on the 13th, Emily Cox will be uh, organizing the decorating, and so we'd love to have people come then to help. Um, and then also, um, I would like to say that there are two other ways you could help, which are donations. We need desserts, we have a dessert auction, and so if you have in mind to prepare a dessert, bring a dessert for uh, Meg and Dean Economy, wave their hands, see them, they are uh, hunching that up again, thank you. And we also need libations. We pretty much exhausted the undercroft. Some of that had turned into vinegar, some of that was wedding at Cana stuff. Anyway, it's all gone, and um, pretty much. And so we need libations, whether that's uh, wine that you want to bring or another equally exciting non-alcoholic drink that you want to bring to, please bring those to the parish office. And as Jeff always used to say, please make them unopened bottles. Uh, that's an important point. And then uh, it's obvious that this whole thing takes a village, and it sometimes takes two villages because there are three parties you will see when you read in the list, despite having had multiple sets of eyes going over the text. There are three parties that do not list the host. Uh, the party, the mystery party is Colleen, Caldwell, and Mike, uh, and there are two parties, the other two parties, two a dinner and a, a ba uh, backyard barbecue party is are both the Bates, Nicholas and, and Gail Bates. And so that will be in the announcements, and, um, but just make sure that, in case you're wondering who what mysterious person is, is promoting this. Anyway, thanks everybody, it's gonna be a rocking blast. You don't wanna miss it, the 13th of February. And we're going to have Timbo and the Tim Bones playing music uh, starting at 5.15, the doors open at five. And my final item is we also have a very short auction, as you know, a live auction. And one of the exciting pieces of news is that a very old favorite uh, item there, Chris Amarelli, original sweater, is back. And we're going to have, uh, Chris isn't here today, I'm sorry to say, but she is going to do a sweater. And I have asked Ann Hoffner to make a public spectacle of herself by standing. And if you would see, she is wearing one of Chris's sweaters. And you can get a closer look at coffee hour. I'm sure she would let you look very into I picked the colors, and Chris provided the art. And she'll let any design she'll do for you, a color. There are other people in the parish who have such treasures, but this is an opportunity to get one for yourself. So thanks a lot, everybody. Looking forward to it. So I have a curious question. Yes. Let's say that my name is not on an envelope there because I'm not a regular giver or a new right. visitor or whatever. So, I that right there. I forgot to read yeah, it. thank you so much. So, are extra, are extra envelopes? There are extra envelopes in the parish office. Apparently, there are some in the back, even, that have no names upon them, but yes, you can get one. And if you lost yours, you can always get another one as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I trust you. I just, Maureen. Yes, there is. I'm going to get there. Yes. Yep. So, Catholic service is this evening. Doors open at 6. Heart music begins at 6.15. Actual service at 7. It's a very meditative time right here in this space. Um, Nick Tennant, who was our cantor this morning, you can tell he has a very lovely voice, um, is going to be training folk on lecturing. So if you are a regular lecturer, or if it's like, oh gosh, do I have the courage to speak publicly and read the read um, scripture? Uh, grab, um, have quick fellowship in the um, narthex in the parish hall, which is right there, um, and then the actual training is going to be in here. And you can't hear me. I bet you can hear me better now. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so, sorry folks who weren't listening to me. Okay. Suffice to say, y'all can hear me now. Um, 
I invite you to come to fellowship, to be with one another. And also, um, several weeks ago, I brought a cake to church because it was extra from a celebration of life that they had at Veranda Park, uh, where Ann and Rich Riddle live. And um, it is that cake. I so wish I did not have my food allergies. It is a, a yellow cake with lemon custard and frosting in between. I mean, are you salivating yet? Um, so come and help um, relish memories. And I know that on the 31st here at Trinity, we will celebrate Anne's life. With that, if it is your birthday, if you are traveling or an anniversary, I invite you to come forward for prayer. Okay, so let us, Emily, are you, you're, you're thinking about it. I'm trying to figure out the dates in my head for your birthday. I'm traveling, and I won't be here next week because of the Russian party. Okay, so let us, let's, and where are you traveling to? Uh, Utah. Okay, so let us bless Emily as she travels to Utah that she be safe, that she receives what she needs, that she offers what she can, <coughs> and that her luggage goes with her, and may she be refreshed and renewed in her travel. Amen. Amen. I invite you to let us do the birthday prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your service, David, John, and Judy as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise in body and spirit for the blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.